Hi guys, here, let us know if you can see us and um, if you can hear us. Uh, we tested it earlier just to make sure it was working and um, we're all okay from our side. And anyway, we'll start the webinar. Nice to meet you all. And we see people from all over the world, which is great. I'm uh, very excited to have you here and talk about the Camino and learn some basic Spanish phrases. I myself, I'm doing um, a Spanish course. I am doing basic, so I'm a beginner. I'm at beginner's level. I've done six weeks. And I must say, I think the older that you get, the harder it is to learn the language and to stick with it. So I do an hour and a half on Tuesday evenings. And um, yeah, <laughs> you'll see how it's working out for me. But Marie here beside me is from Galicia and she's fluent in many languages. So she's here to impress. And uh, let me begin. I see we have a few from Canada. I lived in Canada myself before, so I want to have a special shout out for you guys. Um, I lived in the lovely um, city of Vancouver. So, um, and I, I should go back very soon. So we'll get started. We're just going to take you through um, a few things that we'll be doing today. We, we have many languages that are covered on the trails of the Camino. As you know, there are over 60 routes that all lead into Santiago de Compostela. And there are cultures, different cultures throughout the Camino as well. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll chat through some basic Spanish, but we'll also do a few words of Gallego which is a, a different language actually in Northern Spain, in Galicia, where the Camino um, is based. Uh, so these are the main routes. Maria will walk you through the main routes. I'm Lisa, by the way, forgot to mention that. And this is my colleague, Maria. So I suppose the, the hello, I'm Maria. Uh, so the idea behind the webinar was to, to help you, I suppose, get a little bit excited and ready for, for your trip. And uh, I suppose, um, chatting to other pilgrims, but also to, to people along the route is an essential part of the Camino experience. So we, we thought it'd be great to have a, it'd be great for, for us anyway, and, and if, hopefully for you as well, to have a little webinar where we mess about a little bit in, in Spanish. So we wanted to introduce as well these, these quick slides about the most um, popular routes of the Camino to give you an idea of a, um, the areas. Of course, there's Camino routes from France, from Portugal, from further afield in Switzerland. But uh, the most important one that, that attracts 60% of all pilgrims is the Camino Frances. So if you're doing the Camino Frances, you'll be starting in saint jean pierre de Pau. So if you have French, it'll serve you right, it'll serve you well for a whole full day. <laughs> then once you move on to the likes of uh, La Rioja, Rondes Valles, Burgos, then Spanish will be your best friend. Of course, then as you get into Galicia, as Lisa has explained, we also have our own language, which is Galego, but most people still understand Spanish as well. But it's, it's just good to be aware that, that uh, if you're feeling a little bit confused and you're not really sure that Spanish that you learned in school is not really working out for you, it could be because you're, you're actually listening to a different language. So, in Spanish will be very useful in most of the Camino routes that you do. Even if you do the Camino Portuguese, um, we find Portuguese people, they tend to be quite clued in with, with Spanish anyway. So some essential Spanish will be really useful for, for you, even in Portugal. So today, guys, we're going to, the, just to give you a little bit of an introduction, we're going to go through greetings in Spanish. So the main greetings that um, you will encounter along the Camino de Santiago, also talking to strangers on the Camino, your basic uh, Spanish phrases, um, your basic Camino related Spanish phrases, directions, which is really important for the Camino as you will be walking through many small rural villages and towns. Um, obviously you want to know how to order um, in Spanish when you get to a restaurant. Um, una cerveza is one beer. So Maria will walk you through some Gallego. 
and then we'll have a little a basic conversation between myself and Maria and just so you can get your ear um, tuned in to the pronunciation of some of the words. And we also have um, a free ebook um, full of Spanish phrases that you can take with you on your journey um, and we leave room for questions at the end as well. So these are the basic greetings and I know how to say this one because I've done three, three um, Caminos so far three weeks. I haven't done a full route, but I've done three weeks on different Caminos. And um, when Camino, you'll hear this from all pilgrims, all walkers, um, when you're out in the trails, that's the common phrase um, that you say to people when you meet them first. Is that right, Maria? Yeah, that's right. So when Camino or when Camino Peregrino in, in loads of cases, that's a, that's a very popular, the most popular greeting among pilgrims, but also with the uh, locals. Buen Camino Peregrino or Buen Camino Peregrina, if you're a female uh, traveller. Then once you're getting to Galicia, you could hear Bon Camino or Bon Camino, from, particularly from, from locals, of course. Uh, the, the Galician grannies working around in their, in their little yards, that, that tends to be quite a, quite a popular occurrence. And also another traditional Camino greeting is Ultreya. You don't hear it as much but it's also a traditional greeting for pilgrims since medieval times, which means go beyond and uh, is, is, um, it, it has the same meaning, but it's, it's got like a more traditional kind of um, history. And it means it's, it's a little bit of a deeper meaning, sort of going beyond encouraging the, the traveler to, to, to have like very good luck for, for the, the endeavors on to Santiago, really. Like, Keep going, keep like going. motivation type thing. So we'll keep going. Um, so talking to strangers on the Camino, um, and I found this when I was out in the trail, it's amazing how you just end up chatting to people from all walks of life. So you could be walking for an hour or two on your own and then bump into a pilgrim and maybe walk for it with him or her for 20 minutes. And then you get to a town and you meet like loads of pilgrims that you might have seen or waved to or said Buen Camino to along the way. So I think it's a very important part of the Camino experience. And hopefully then when you reach your final destination, if that be um, Santiago de Compostela, you've made lifelong friends in the Camino. I know that I've met a few and like people of all ages and all walks of life and you do feel this common bond. So yeah, and it's nice to be able to use um, a few common Camino phrases. So we'll get to that now. Um, so I'm going to ask the phrases in English and then Maria is going to give us the correct pronunciation in Spanish. So does anyone here speak English? Hay alguien que hable inglés or alguien habla inglés? Hay, hay alguien que habla inglés. Hay alguien que habla inglés. Hay alguien que habla inglés. Perfecto. We're getting there. And good morning. Buenos días. Buenos días. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Good evening. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. And it's very common when you go into a restaurant um, to salute all the fellow diners. It's quite common in Spain, particularly in small places. When you come in, even if you don't know anybody there, it's quite common to say buenas tardes or even buen provecho, wishing them like that they enjoy their meal. So it's, it's quite a, um, a, a courtesy thing, yeah. kind of thing to do. Um, and then goodbye. Goodbye, you can say adios, but adios, adios sounds nearly as a very final goodbye. So it's quite common to hear ciao, which for most people it sounds like Italian, but it's actually very commonly used in, in across Spain when you say goodbye to someone. Ciao. Ciao. Like ciao. see you. Or see you. you. Might see you again. Yeah. Um, please. Por favor. Por favor. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. You could say muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And you're welcome. De nada. De nada. Which means it's nothing. So it's not a bother to me to do this for you. Okay. De nada. De nada. No problem. No problem. Um, excuse me or sorry. Perdone o perdona. Eh, perdona is more if you're if you're talking to that person as a you, whereas perdona is a more of a formal way. So. For instance, you could use it if you're cycling the Camino and you're ringing your bell because you need a walker to sort of, you don't want to be rude to the walker, but you need to, you need to let them know that you're coming. So you can say perdone o perdón. So, perdón. so they, they, you know, so you're being polite. Okay. Perdón. 
And we have a few um, more Camino related ones as well. So Dunday Estad, that is where, where is, but yeah, where is, so for instance, this could be really helpful if you're trying to find your hotel mm -hmm. or a pharmacy mm -hmm. or the restaurant or anything else or your friend, <laughs> hopefully not. But uh, you could say, Donde está, Donde está el restaurante or Donde está the name of your hotel or Donde está la farmacia, the pharmacy, you need to get some plasters. Hopefully not, but in case. <laughs> so where, how do you say, where are the other pilgrims then? Where are the pilgrims? Donde están los peregrinos? Donde están los, los peregrinos. peregrinos? And I'm coming from? So I'm coming from is quite useful because you can explain that you're coming from, as, as in where you're coming from as a country, yeah. or you could use it as well to explain where did you start your Camino? So you can say, vengo de Sarria, or vengo de Ocebreiro, vengo de San John Pierre de Port, vengo de Le Puy, if you started as far as Le Puy. But you could also say, vengo de Vancouver, or Malaga, or anywhere else. So you could use it for both purposes. And the V has turned into a B. In Spain, <laughs> yeah, in Spain. So the pronunciation yeah. in Spanish, you don't pronounce, you don't, don't you pronounce the same. V and B, they are pronounced like a B. B. So it's a, it gets a bit confusing, but just but stick to the B, whether it's whether a, or not, whether yeah. it's a V or a B. So vengo de Saria. Yeah, and same for boy, 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 boy a Santiago. I'm going to Santiago. Santiago, and I am. That you can kind of say I'm from, can't you, with that as well? Yeah. So, right so mm. I suppose what we wanted to say here is if you want to say you're a pilgrim, mm -hmm. you want to introduce yourself as a pilgrim. During the day, it'll be obvious to most people. <laughs> but in, at night, if you're going into a restaurant and maybe yeah. you want to talk to the owner, the bar woman yeah. or the barman, you can explain that you're a pilgrim. You can say, soy una peregrina or soy un peregrino. And there's a specific word if you're doing the Camino on a bike. Which is called a uh, bicigrino, which is a bit of a new newish Camino lingo, but it's, it's quite widely used, and that means that you're a bike pilgrim. So you can say, Soy una bicigrina, because soy I'm bicigrino. cycling the Camino, or Soy un bicigrino, because you're cycling the Camino. Okay, we'll all try it. Soy una peregrina. Soy una peregrina. Soy una peregrina. Muy bien, dice. And I'd like to. Uh, I like to. Estoy buscando. We're missing. Estoy buscando. I'm looking oh, for. Oh yeah, I'm looking for. Sorry. Estoy buscando. It's the same as donde está. Estoy okay. buscando. I'm looking for. Estoy buscando. My hotel. Uh, mi hotel. Estoy buscando a mi amiga, my friend. Okay. Uh, she's tall. Es alta. Um, you know, you can start with the with the description. Quisiera is I like to. If you're at the restaurant or if you're at the pharmacy or if you're at the hotel, quisiera. Um, I don't know. Quisiera. I'd like to get some lunch. Yeah, yeah. quisiera um, or quisiera reservar mesa. Quis, like I would like to go make a reservation, book a table. Okay. And I don't or I like I like it and I don't like it. This is this is a good so this one. is important yeah, because it is. Uh, I suppose going like traveling in general. Um, Food is a very important part of traveling, yeah. and uh, we always recommend that people try as many things as possible. Mm -hmm. But the certain things that that um, that we just hate, <laughs> and we don't want to be put through that, and there's certain things that uh, we love. So it's it's always handy to know that. So if you want to say that me gusta, so me gusta mm. el pescado. I love fish. So so you can you can say it at the at the table. If you're looking for recommendations, or no me gusta, yeah. I don't like. Me gusta el pulpo, I like octopus. So in Galicia, it's quite common that uh, you have specific restaurants dedicated only to octopus, which are called pulperias. You'll find some in Melide. Melide on the Camino Frances is a very traditional stop for for octopus, to eat octopus. Mm -hmm. And um, because traditionally it used to be a place with loads of markets and pulpo was a traditional dish for market days because mm -hmm. it traveled really well. And then they, they, they'll cook it in these big cauldrons. So even though Melide is in land, it's probably one of the capitals of pulperias. So if you don't like pulpo, definitely don't go into a pulperia. <laughs> you say, if someone suggests it to you, the guide or a friend or another pilgrim, Oh, you should definitely try a pulperia. You say, no me gusta el pulpo. 
Sorry. I yeah. love pulpo, but Lisa here yeah. is not a big no, fan. No, me gusta pulpo. <laughs> but me gusta um, churros. churros. Churros and chocolate. In the morning, churros and chocolate are my thing. So me gusta churros. Um, no, me gusta pulpo. <laughs> uh, and do you speak English? This Abla is important English. as well. Abla I English. Say. Yeah, because in the restaurant or in a hotel, if you yeah. need to ask extra questions, it's nice to know that someone speaks a little bit of English, you know. Yeah, especially if you're in a situation where you're tired and you're not finding the words, and mm -hmm. it's handy to have a bit of an essential essential language skills. But sometimes your brain just doesn't want to engage, no. and it's easier just to switch back to what you know. So you can say, oh, habla, habla inglés, and then they so, might or they might not. Mm -hmm. In most cases, they, they will. They will. Yeah. A few words. A little bit. Un poco. Un poco. Un poco. And then this is very important as well. So if you're looking for an ATM or a cash machine, mm -hmm. eh, they're called cajero, cajero or cajero automático. But if you say cajero alone, they they'll understand. Yeah. Cajero. cajero. So now for the directions, I suppose this is important for people that are going heading out in the trail soon. You want to know where to go. We also we have this available in the phrase book and I will send a copy of all of um, the slides to everyone after after the webinar. Um, so that you can download them or, or print them off or just have them on your phones in case you need them. Um, so how do I get to? ¿Cómo puedo llegar? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo puedo? Llegar. Llegar. O, ¿Cómo ah. llego? Llegar is to arrive. So, ¿cómo llego? O, ¿cómo puedo llegar a eh, Arzúa o Santiago o the next town along the, along the, along okay. the route? ¿Cómo puedo llegar? So the, that double double L there yeah. is is j pronounced like a J really. Uh, ¿Cómo puedo llegar a? And um, is it far? Está lejos. Está lejos is far, and cerca is near. So they could say está cerca o está lejos. Está lejos. Is it far? Go straight ahead. Siga recto o recto. If you say recto, it's straight. straight. And then the same for turn and left, turn right. You don't really have to remember how to say turn, but if you say right and left, izquierda, which is left, derecha, which is right, then you'll be able to pick up that keyword and you'll be able to, to follow the basic directions. You don't need to remember turn or not turn. If they say left or right, you know that you have to, to turn. Otherwise, it's recto. <laughs> okay, and just turn left, how do you pronounce that? that tuerza. Turn? Tuerza Presa. a la izquierda o tuerza a la derecha. Presa a la izquierda yeah. and presa a la, a la derecha. There's other ways of saying it, but tuerza is, is, is quite literal. Okay, <laughs> then get it. And open. Abierto. Abierto. So if I For said... For shops or restaurants. Yeah, so if I said abierto, está and abierto. I pointed at a restaurant, they'd understand what I was trying to yeah, say. Yeah, está abierto. Está, está abierto. And or está cerrado. Está cerrado. They, they generally have these little signs on the doors as well mm. for open or close anyway. And it's now, good to understand them. You know, so if you have those two words, you yeah. can say, okay, well, it says cerrado. That means it's closed for siesta during the day, which which is yeah. quite common. Well, what's quite common, the, the time, the, the way the, the time is structured across most of Spain anyway, not maybe not in the big cities, um, most shops they open in the morning and they, they close a couple of hours for lunch and then they open again in the afternoon till quite late so it is possible that you arrive in the town and you'll find that most of the shops are closed because it's probably between half one two till four or five so you have to understand that um that time is the time that people go back home they cook their lunch they eat their have lunch they'll, they'll, they'll have a rest if, if they have time or they can and then they go back to work they go back to work for four or five maybe till nine or ten in the evening mm -hmm. so so the, especially if you're in a small town you'll find that these areas with shops so if you arrive at lunchtime they'll, they'll all be closed but then the areas with restaurants they'll be they'll all be open and it's the other way around. The restaurants mm -hmm. won't be open in the morning when the shops are open, mm -hmm. only the bars and the cafes. And then in the afternoon, they'll, they'll do lunches until quite late, but then they'll close and then they won't open for dinner maybe till eight mm -hmm. or nine. So the, it's, it's important to, to sort of get, get uh, used to the different way of structuring the, the opening hours and, and days on, 
yeah. when you're in Spain anyway. I didn't know that, you know, and I didn't understand Abierto and Cerrado when I got to Vigo, when I did the Portuguese coast. And Vigo's a very big and city. And Vigo's a very big yeah. city and, and places were closed, you know, it was normal. I think we got there at around three, half three and places were closed until they told me six or seven in the evening. But the, the nice thing about that is at six or seven in the evening, you can go and you can order a pinch or you can order a, a una cerveza uh, or a una vino blanco in the bar and you can get a pincho. So a pincho is a free tapas, which we'll, we'll go through later. But um, yeah, so you don't need your dinner then. You can just get a pincho. <laughs> um, and last but not least, donde esta? That's quite important as well. Yeah, so donde esta? Where is the bus station? Where, donde esta la estación de autobús? Or donde esta la estación de tren, the train station? Or donde esta la farmacia? Or donde esta la catedral? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you, you see it. It'll be quite people. obvious, but. Just in case. Okay, so we're in a restaurant and we need to order our food. So can I have a beer, please? Una cerveza, por favor. Una cerveza, por favor. O un vino, por favor, if you prefer wine. Or un agua, por favor, if you want to drink water. water. Un agua, por favor. O un zumo, a juice. A juice. Un zumo. Un zumo. And I am vegetarian. Soy vegetariano. Soy vegetariana. Now, in the cities... It's, it's very similar to Ireland in the cities mm. or other countries. In 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 the cities, the, the concept of being vegetarian will be quite understood, but in the small villages, it might not be as obvious. No. So you might need to explain that you don't eat meat and mm -hmm. you don't eat fish. Mm -hmm. So you say, no como carne, no como pescado, which is what the line we have at the very end. I don't eat meat and I don't eat fish. Well, you're missing it. The fish is amazing in Glacia. <laughs> And that's only my, my preference. Um, can, and where are we now? Um, could you help me, please? Puede ayudarme? So you can ask someone, puede ayudarme, if you want them to help you with the menu. With the menu, yeah. yes. Yeah. And then you can, you have, uh, que me recomienda? What do you What's recommend? Recommend? Puede ayudarme? Que me recomienda? What would you recommend? If you're vegetarian, you explain you're vegetariano, vegetariana. Okay. And if you have any... Uh, dietary requirements, you can explain that as well. So if you're celiac, you say celíaco or celíaca. Or you can say, I'm allergic, which we have here for the rock. Soy alérgico al gluten, which is gluten intolerance. Or soy alérgico a um, whatever it is you, you might be allergic to. Maybe it could be milk, it could be dairy in general, it could be shellfish. It's a very common allergy. Yeah. So it's, it's important to have those few keywords because... Um, Especially if they're related to, to medical, medical yeah. issues. Yeah. And the, can you explain a little bit, Marie, about the re lavación? Lavación. Yeah. So in Spain, it's very common that, that you go to a restaurant. There's different types of restaurants. There's restaurants of mm, quite standard restaurants, and then there's restaurants of top categories. So uh, the thing is, you can go to a sit-down restaurant and have a three-course meal, and you all have your own dishes, and that's fine. But in general... What most people do, they go to restaurants quite often. In Spain, you go to restaurants quite often. And you order what they call raciones, which means you order like um, sharing portions. Like a sharing okay. portion. It's kind like of. portions that are designed to share. So then let's say if you're three or four friends, you order four or five different raciones. So you can all try the same things and you don't have to be stuck to, to one thing. So you could be like, you could order a ración de... Pimientos de Padrón, and then another one, the calamares, squid, another one of pulpo, octopus, another one of uh, meat, so it could be ternera, beef, or it could be something else. So you all get to try different things. So it's, it's, a, it's a very sort of convivial way of, of sharing dinner. And then in some cases, you can order media ración, which is half a portion. So let's say if you're only two people and you want to try four or five things, you're not going to order the full ración because five ración is or two people will be way too much. So you might be able to order half portions. And so then la media, yeah, la media, media ración. ración. And then another thing that Lisa was touching on earlier about the tapas and the pinchos. Mm -hmm. So this this uh, there's a bit of an overlapping between the two of them. But in mm -hmm. general, let's say if you go to places such as Burgos or Logroño, there's a quite, quite a big uh, tapas scene. So you mm -hmm. go to bars and Calle de Laurel in Logroño, for instance, and uh, you can go into a bar, a restaurant, have a little, a little glass of wine, and then pick different tapas, and then you pay 
for each of the tapa that you that you ordered the small little is uh, nearly like samples for mm -hmm. loads of quite a lot of variety and you pay maybe two euros a, mm -hmm. a pop so you could have dinner made of like loads of different tapas and try different things in different establishments the then in santiago it's a little bit different like uh, when you're talking about pinchos which is quite common in the north of spain uh, they're generally considered little free free complementary bits of um, of um, food of food that mm. you get given with your with your drink so obviously you don't get to choose them because you get them give, given for free so let's say in santiago if you go along calle de, de rua de raino rua do franco there's loads of uh, bars and the moment you order a drink they'll come straight with your with tortilla your free or tortilla or free bread and ham, ham it's amazing. cheese amazing. or Queso. Yeah, depending on the restaurants, they might bring you some croquetas, which are the little croquettes with bechamel and ham. So you don't get to pick them, but you get given them for free. So you could do like a little tour and then sample different uh, free pinchos along around the, the city. But they're different to tapas. Tapas that are a little bit bigger, maybe there's more variety, but you pay, you have to pay for them. I am starving here. It's nearly <laughs> dinner time in Ireland and all we're talking about is food. So um yeah, I'm really hungry. Um so what is today's menu? How do we how do we say that? Then? Um cuál es el menú del día o el menú de hoy? In most restaurants they would have a menú del día like the the daily specials and uh, in some cases they would have a uh, more basic ones and then a range of like a basic one to a more expensive mm -hmm. one depending on what's included in the menu. And um, in along the Camino, there's loads of places where they have menu del peregrino, so it's generally quite cheap. But then there's generally other menus that are a little bit more upgraded menus, or you could order a la carte as well if you prefer, or raciones. And could I have the bill, please? That's important. La cuenta, por favor, or me trae la cuenta, por favor. La cuenta, por favor. La cuenta is the bill. And me trae check. la cuenta, por favor. And we did the the I don't eat um, meat or fish. Meat or fish. Yeah, yeah, that's important. No yeah. come carne and ni pescado. Ni pescado. So now that we've done our basic um, Spanish phrases in um, Spanish that you will use along the way, we'll have a few phrases, a few words in Gallego from Maria because she, she is from the region and it is we're lucky to have her and um, she speaks fluent Gallego so. You want to yeah, so Galileo will be my first language, believe it or not. Uh, I was brought up in the north of Galicia in a town called Viveiro, on the coast. It's not on the Camino, but it's on the Cantabrian coastal way, which we have on the website as well. And it's a lovely trail. It's not far from Ribadeo on the Camino del Norte. And uh, so I'm very proud of, to have Galileo as my first language. Uh, I speak Spanish fluently as well because we're schooled in, in two languages. So um, it once let's say if you're doing the Camino Frances, the moment you cross into Ocebreiro, you might notice that the names of the places are a little bit different. Although from Villafranca del Bierzo, traditionally they used to be part of the Kingdom of Galicia, so some names, they start to sound a little bit like Galego. Uh, so you'll notice more, more kind of a finishing names in Eiro, like Ocebreiro, and uh, for instance, Ocebreiro, O means D, which in Spanish would be El, so let's say in, in the meseta, you'll find names like El Acebo or El This, El That, but in Gallego would be O or A. So um, the most common phrases you'll encounter in the Camino uh, in Gallego would be Camino de Santiago. So let's say the route is marked as Camino de Santiago until you get to Galicia. Then once you get to Galicia, it's called Camino de Santiago o Camino de Santiago. And then a, a common greeting from the Galician grannies would be Bon Camino or Bo Camino. And then Moitas Gracias would be a way to, to thank people in, in Galicia. On the sta, which is quite similar, where is? Mm. And if you're going Instead to finish on the sta, yeah, on and the if sta. you're going to finish terre, you can say Bo Afisterra, which is the Galician name, Bo Afisterra. Most of the name places will be in Galego, they're marked in Galego. So, um, on the website, when we write blogs about it, we mm. try to keep the name in Galego as well, yeah. because that's the name, that's the official name, and on that's the, the name you'll find on, on the places anyway. And then you can say, son una peregrina, or so, son un peregrino, if you want to say that you're a pilgrim in Galician language. And in Santiago especially, you find a lot of Galician spoken in the rural towns as well. Loads of people, like, let's say, 
um, grandparents, uh, they, they'll understand Spanish, but they don't necessarily speak that that much. So the people you find in the rural areas, the, the older the older generations, they, they, they'll they understand you in Spanish, but they might reply to you back in, in Gallego. So if you don't understand they immediately, just think that it might be because they're not necessarily replying to you in, in, in Spanish. And then if you're still in Casa Rurales, uh, they tend to be in rural areas. They tend to keep a name that is um, that is uh, honoring the origins of the house. So there's a lot of names that are, most of their names in the Casa Rurales will be in, in, in Gallego. So it would, it would be a casa do, the house mm -hmm. of, or o muinho de, the, the male of, or o muinho da pena is one of the Casa Rurales we work with. Um, that's one of the ones I can think of. But there's lots of very good names in Gallego. In Gallego, you'll, you'll hear a lot the sound of sh. So if you see an X, like in Muxia, it's not Muxia, it's Muxia. Mux it's like a, nearly like an SH sound. So um, you don't, in Gallego, we don't have J, the J sound no. that you have in Spanish, like uh, Najeda, for instance, we don't have that sound. We have an X sound, and that would be Muxia. Oh, like okay. Moshia, okay. for instance. Yeah. yeah, I'm learning loads as well. Or Rias Baixas, if you're working, if you're doing the Portuguese coastal way and you're into your Albariño white wine, Rias Baixas is the region that you're going to be crossing, like Pontevedra, Cambados, uh, Vigo, around there, Rias Baixas. Rias Baixas. That's okay, get my head. I'll have to do a lot more practice. Um, so we're going to do a little um, dialogue between myself and Maria and bear with me. I'm not, I, as I said, I'm a beginner, but I do it like once a week. So I'm trying and um, then we'll, we'll send you all this afterwards. So don't, don't worry. I just, it would be good for you to listen to the pronunciation and get some of the um, pronunciation of Maria more so than me, but I, I'll try my best. So, hola. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Bien, ¿cómo te llamas? Me llamo Lisa. ¿Y tú? Me llamo María. Felicidades por terminar el camino. Congratulations on finishing your camino. ¿De dónde eres? Soy, Where are you from? Soy de Irlanda. Soy de Irlanda. I'm from Ireland. ¿Dónde empezaste el camino? Where did you start your camino? Comencé en Saria y terminé en Santiago de Compostela. Muy bien. She started in Saria and she's finished in Santiago. ¿Recibiste tu certificado de Compostela? Sí, en la oficina de peregrinos. So I've asked her if she got her Compostela certificate and she said yes, in the pilgrim's office. ¿Y qué, lleva, ¿Y qué llevaste para tu viaje? What did you pack for your trip? Mucho. Zapatos, calcetines, camiseta, camiseta, camiseta mochila, Bast bastones para bastones caminar. Para cam caminar. Bastones. Zapatos, shoes, socks, eh, t-shirts, backpack, and even walking sticks. ¿Vas al restaurante? Sí. ¿Y qué comes? Me gusta el marisco y la paella y una copa de vino blanco. Muy bien. She likes shellfish and paella and a glass of white wine. ¿Y disfrutaste de tu camino? ¿Te gustó el camino? Sí, amo el camino. So she loved the camino. Nos vemos la próxima vez en el camino, entonces. Hasta pronto. Sí, hasta pronto. Adiós. Buen camino. <laughs> so at the end there, we just said, um, when will I, will I see you next time on the camino? And I said, hasta pronto. Yes, very soon. Sí, Friends. hasta pronto. So that's our little dialogue, and we think that you know that should get you by for your for your basic Camino lesson. Um, and we have a few little resources that you can avail of um, anytime on our website. And I'll send you the link in here. We've a phrase book which will give you phrases, a page or two of phrases in Gallego, and also a page or two of phrases in Spanish, and also a page or two of phrases in French. So you're covering the whole um, Camino Frances if you're if you're doing the full. Um, route and even if you're doing a week you might come back in the future mm. and, do, and do the rest so it's good handy to have for the trail um, and is there anything else Maria from us I suppose the questions from you guys I mean yeah. Maria is here uh, we, we have a lot of information on the blog as well caminoways.com slash blog um, we have the ebook as well to download um, just encourage you as well to practice the little Spanish that you might 
but if you have a lot of Spanish, then definitely, definitely practice as much as you can. Um, also, not to get disheartened if you don't understand straight away, because it could be that you're listening to Galego. There's a lot of people who have gone through that and they thought, okay, my Spanish is really rubbish, I can't remember anything. And it turns out that, that they weren't speaking Spanish at all. And even though they're, they're similar enough languages, because um, they're both from, they come from Latin. Um, Galego sounds a little bit like a mixture between Portuguese and Spanish. So it's, it is not it is not the, the same the same language. So don't get discouraged if you don't understand. Uh, maybe ask them to write it down and uh, just enjoy enjoy practicing and enjoy um, learning a few words here and 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 there. And yeah, in Buen Camino, it'll be a great experience. David asked, David, we're just answering your question. How do you orange pronounce juice. orange juice? Zumo de naranja. Zumo. So if you're saying it in Spanish, it'll be zumo de naranja, which is what I was saying about the J's, zumo de naranja. Zumo. Sort of a hard one to pronounce. And then if you say it in Gallego, you could say eh, laranja. So use the, the X, zumo, zumo de laranja. De Sumo de naranja. Sumo. I'll write it there as well. Marie is going to write it down for you as well. Sumo de naranja. Sumo de naranja. Please repeat, I'm allergic to shellfish. Soy alérgica al marisco. Soy alérgica. Soy alérgica al marisco. Al marisco. Are you allergic to fish as well? Or just shellfish? Because then you can say, soy alérgica al pescado. Fish y al marisco. So shellfish, marisco, fish, pescado. Yeah. If you're allergic to both, then it's worth it. Pescado y marisco. Pescado yes. y marisco. Fish and shellfish. Sí. If you're really allergic and it's, it's really dangerous, you can just reinforce it by saying, soy muy alérgica. Soy muy alérgica. Uh, so Anthony is wondering where does Gallego start on the Camino Frances? So it's, it's generally when you cross from the region of El Bierzo, roughly around Villafranca, into Ocebreiro. Ocebreiro is Galicia already. Okay. So the, the word itself, Ocebreiro, is a very Galician name. So that's where you start uh, seeing Gallego in, in names and, uh, and also in conversation, getting, picking it up in conversations as well. How many days out is that? From Santiago, or Sebrero? Uh, Sebrero would be maybe about 10 days, because maybe it's like two, three days, days out from Santiago Ferrara. to Compostela. Yeah. So 10 days out from your journey. Yeah, um, only from Sebrero, really. You'll, you'll, you'll start hearing Galego. How do you say, where's, where's the bathroom? That's a good question. Yeah, should, that's, we should have, we should have put it in there. Uh, so bathroom? you can say, donde está el aseo, o el cuarto de baño, but... El cuarto de baño is more like a bathroom, like as in the sense of bathing. Okay. But um, but they're both they're both understood to be the toilets anyway. So you could say donde, donde está, está el aseo. El aseo. O That's easy, you know. El cuarto de baño. Aseo is easier, really. Yeah. Donde cuarto está de, uh, el aseo. De baño with a leñe, but I don't have a leñe there in my in my computer. Oh, el cuarto de baño. El cuarto de baño. And that's mostly if you're yeah, no, you, you, Yeah, it's more if you're in a mm -hmm. home environment more than a restaurant. A restaurant, you can just say aseo. Aseo. No está el aseo. Aseo de chicas, aseo de chicos. Eh, mujer, de mujeres, de hombres. If you go to the ladies' room or the, or the men, so you can put aseo de mujeres o chicas. Aseo de hombres. Hombres. O chicos. In some cases, it'll be for both. So they might just say, es, es el mismo, it's the same. Es el in most, mismo. Yeah, in most cases, it'll be, it'll be for, for both female okay. or male. But in case, if it's a very small bar, they might just have one that is for everyone. Or okay. In general, they have two different ones. Yeah. So if you say, aseo de hombres, de hombres, they know. If you point or just yeah. say this, aseo de hombres, they know you're looking for the bathroom for men. Yeah, if you're, the mujer, yeah. You're if you're a man, they'll probably point you to the men's one anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, if you have any more questions, just we can keep the chat open for like three, four minutes. And then otherwise, we'll be 
we'll be sending the, the recording of the video. It'll be available probably tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a PDF of the slides. So she, I can send Lisa them for you. can send them on and uh, you can download the, the ebook, you can download the, the slides as well. And yeah, we wish you a very when, lovely trip. When Camino. Camino, of course. And or Bon Camino. Or Bon Camino, yeah, exactly. And we really hope you really have a great time. And um, yeah, I hope we're, you're really excited about your trip. And yeah, I'm 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 just back from a trip, by the way. I just did a trip out in Galicia, so I'm just back last week. So I'm I'm re-energized and ready to go. I find it just gives me. I need to do at least one a year to, <laughs> to get my energy levels back up to where I want them to be. Um. So yeah, enjoy your trip. You'll 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 love every minute, and we can't wait to hear. Um. Do get in touch when you return to tell us how it went and um how you found. Yeah, and don't be afraid to try new things if you're not allergic, of course. And if you want to ask, what is this? Yeah. You say, ¿Qué, qué es? ¿Qué yeah. es? What is this? What is this? So yeah. they, might tell, they might tell you, well, it's fish or it's meat or it's, you know, you're not going to be eating very weird stuff, mm. but, <laughs> but just in case. Something different. ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es? ¿O qué es esto? ¿Qué es esto? What is this? What is this? Um, particularly for vegetarians, it'll be important, or for people who are allergic. So you don't want to eat something that has uh, dairy or gluten or meat or fish or shellfish, like in 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 your case. And don't forget the churros for breakfast. Churros for breakfast. We'll churros. put it here. Churros y con chocolate. Con chocolate. It's churros and chocolate. You have to have it. Amazing. Yummy. So we, we, we leave you guys and um, we'll get home and have our, some dinner after talking about all that, <laughs> that food in Spain. And um, we don't have any tapas or pinchos, um, but we'll have to go, and, we'll we'll have have to go on the Camino. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so buen Camino. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Ciao. Uh -huh. That was great. That was great, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was great. It was lovely. Like, oh, it's really, really interactive. Nice. They're from all over the world. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could send them a nice note tomorrow. Like, we'll oh, do thank you very much. There's 95 people. Yeah. And they, they, stayed. they stayed. And they, they stayed. stayed. So we'll just send them a note and we'll just say thanks so much for coming along. Yeah, we, definitely. We really enjoyed it as well. Make sure that we publish the video and then, yeah, send them a note with it. With yeah. Perfect. And send them all the links. It's very space. interactive, isn't it? It's great. Like, even though it's a screen, you still feel a personal yeah. little bit like. Great.